Yes, I opened it up, I tore it apart, and that's the guts of the RSA 306. And before I will strap on uh, this pretty lens here and uh, get into the uh, close-up shots of the insides of the RSA 306, I thought I'll give you a quick overview so that you know what's going on where and uh, get a general idea of how this spectrum analyzer works. So uh, your signal comes in here through this big end connector, obviously. Then there's some signal processing on the back. Um, we're gonna look, take a look at that in a moment. There's a, uh, an attenuator, a step attenuator, right about here where my finger is. And it all ends up in this section here. It has a bunch of filters in there, a couple of switches. And depending on the frequency range, it goes into different sections here. From here, the signal goes off into this mixer section. I've got a little PLL here and uh, mixer and transformer down here. Anyway, this is where the mixing happens, the down conversion. Apparently the IF, the intermediate frequency here is 140 megahertz. And uh, you can tell this by this filter over here. So after the signal is down converted, it goes over here, gets filtered by this nice little filter. And then a little bit more of signal conditioning happens. And uh, over here we have our 14 bit ADC. And uh, that one is used to sample the 40 megahertz wide signal that we have here. This filter actually has a bandwidth of uh, 42 megahertz. So technically you could get that extra two megahertz out of there, assuming that the ADC allows it. And this 14 bit ADC samples at 125 mega samples per second. That's uh, probably why you need USB 3.0 because that's a lot of data. So right here we got a little FPGA. Uh, I say little, it's not little, but it's a FPGA and it passes all the data over to this uh, Cypress a USB 3.0 bridge. That's something you can buy straight off the shelf if you want to build USB 3.0 applications. Maybe something you want to look at. Then the other two inputs that we have here are our 10 megahertz reference input and the trigger input. And uh, we've got a little bit of circuitry around there too. Like here's a little PLL, uh, just a clock generator PLL. If I flip the board upside down, you can see some of the stuff on the back. Um, like I said, there's some signal conditioning here. We've got a little bit of switching. We've got a, uh, a attenuator over here. And then we got lots of the power supply stuff on this side of the PCB. Uh, there is a PLL uh, right there uh, that's coming from the 10 megahertz reference input. So, but again, we're gonna take a closer look at that and all of that in a moment. There's some power stuff here, obviously. There's a little bit of power supply stuff here. And um, that's just a general overview off the uh, circuit board. So now let me put on the uh, lens and let's get into a close-up view and let's follow the signal path from the end connector uh, to the USB output. All right, let's try to follow the signal path directly from the end input and let's try to follow it in a way so that we end up at the USB 3.0 connector. So basically from start to finish. So we of course got a coupling cap here and uh, right at the start we have a little filter here and you will find a lot of filters of this particular type over this board. Then uh, further over here those uh, 42, uh, 42520 um, ICs, they are single pole double throw RF switches from 9 kilohertz through uh, I think it's 18, no 13 gigahertz. Then uh, further on we got a lot of these chips across the entire design with these SMD markings 09C and I tried to look for them but I didn't find anything. Just judging by their positioning, what they do, what, what they look like, I would assume that they are switches but I'm not certain. If you find what they are or find a data sheet, please let me know. I'd be very interested in that. So. Again, I'm assuming there are switches, so one of the signal paths we can take is uh, through this uh, nice uh, strip there um, into this uh, Hittite uh, 624A, and uh, the 624A is a, a digital attenuator. It has, I think, uh, 0.5 dB step width, and it goes from 0.5 dB to 31.5 dB attenuation and it's a pretty nifty IC. Then uh, it goes over here into more of those 09C ICs and again I believe there are switches. Um, not sure 
absolutely not sure, but I'm fairly certain. So uh, one of the paths we can go is up here, and this is the relevant path. Uh, here we have one of those uh, 09Cs again, and there's two ways we can go from here. We can either go up and through this filter, and then we're going out to the other side through this via, or we can go through this filter and go down this path through this via onto the other side of the PCB. If I flip the PCB over, where this takes us is into a, let me zoom out for one moment just so that you can see the entire assembly. This takes us to this side of the board and uh, one of the pins that we just saw, one of the possible signal paths comes out of this via right here that one in the center and the other one was this one down here so from here it goes again either up there or down here into one of those 09c probably switches and then from there let me zoom out a little bit it goes into an array of possible filter combinations which then again on the output are combined or selected through those uh, 09c ICs again I'm not certain what they are, but I'm sure we'll find out. And uh, from here, we are moving probably inside the PCB somewhere over into this section. And uh, this is the important section. This here is the entire mixer stage. We have a transformer down here. Uh, on first glance, you may confuse that with the mixer since uh, plenty of mixers do look that way but that's not what that is. The mixer used in the spectrum analyzer is this uh, 8343 from uh, analog devices. It's a DC to two and a half gigahertz active mixer and it gets its LO signal from this ADF4360, which is a PLL that I have used on the block before. I think I've shown off the demo boards for the 4360 before, and we've done some things with that one. So uh, it's a very interesting PLL. It's a uh, relatively low phase noise PLL also. And uh, this is where all the mixing happens in this uh, AD. Is it an AD? Uh, probably is AD8343. I'm not sure if it's an ADF or just AD8343, but it is an analog devices part. And um, after the down conversion happens, it goes over onto this side and uh, through this Vectron filter. This filter here is an SAW filter for, with a center frequency of 140 megahertz. It does have a 42 megahertz bandwidth, so a little bit more than the spectrum analyzer has as a real-time bandwidth. Then we're moving over here to this uh, 5201, and the ADL5201 is a uh, high-speed, digitally controlled VGA, so it's a variable gain amplifier. That's uh, right here after the filter stage. And after that, we have a little bit of filtering, lots of signal conditioning, and those nice little test points here at the bottom. From there, we are going into, again, a Hittite part, an H922, and that is a single pole double throw switch. Interestingly, it's rated from DC through 4 gigahertz, but uh, no, I was, uh, for a second, I was thinking that matters, but it does not, because now we're mixed down to 140 megahertz. So that is perfectly fine. And this is where the real sampling happens. That's where the data acquisition happens. This is a 14-bit 125 mega samples per second low power ADC and uh, that one does all the sampling for you so the RF signal the down converted RF signal now at an IF of 140 megahertz goes directly into there gets sampled by this uh, Spartan 6 FPGA and everything that needs to happen after that is pretty simple it gets sent through the Cypress USB 3.0 bridge directly into your computer. That's really all the magic. Honestly, when I opened this up, I was really hoping to see a lot of fanciful RF stuff in there, but um, can't really see much of it. And, uh, you know, that's actually expected. This is a product where most of the things happen in software. So 
I'm not too disappointed, but I hope you still find it interesting. Now, this connector here is the uh, 10 MHz reference input. There's two PLLs that follow after that. One is the ADF4001. That is a PLL specifically for clock generation. And then on the back side, let me see if I can find it real quick. There it is. Uh, this Maxim um, PLL is for higher frequencies. So uh, I assume that on one side they're just generating some low level clock for something and then they're doing something more fanciful on this side. That's uh, Max 2870. And uh, this one can generate frequencies between about 24 megahertz to 6,000 megahertz. And uh, I'm not sure if they, uh, what they may do, I'm not sure they, they may from here generate the uh, the uh, LO signal directly or they may just derive some sort of intermediate signal that then drives this PLL. I'm not certain or they may use one or the other depending on whether or not the external reference is used. Um, I haven't really looked at it that closely. Um, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. There's not that much fanciful things in here like I said. It's uh, very unfortunate, but it still looks pretty. Uh, one thing I've noticed is the mix of different manufacturers in here. Usually you try to stick, or most companies try to stick with one manufacturer. If you start buying crystals or oscillators from a certain company, you try to stick with that company throughout your design. That sometimes makes uh, part sourcing a whole lot easier. But in this case, they're using uh, an Apricon oscillator over here and then a Vectron filter over here. Those two companies are direct competitors. Uh, they're using analog devices parts and Maxim parts, everything mixed into each other. So I'm sure they spent lots of time into uh, deciding what parts they need and uh, separating solely by uh, data sheet requirements and uh, didn't really look at what manufacturer consistency they could achieve and can be a good thing and uh, I'm sure they spent some time thinking about this. So again, very easy design, um, lots of itty bitty tiny filters in there and uh, not much magic. But uh, looking at this, I really, 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 really wish that Tektronix would release some sort of documentation of how to interface with this on your own, just with own software. Because, I mean, this is perfect for number one SDR, software defined radio. This is a perfect SDR. And I mean, at the end of the day, this is, it's exactly that. It converts any frequency, uh, any band between the, uh, what's it, nine kilohertz to 6.2 kilo, kilo, gigahertz, 6.2 gigahertz down to uh, this uh, 140 megahertz IF and gives you access to 40 megahertz of bandwidth. And it would be so nice if there would be a way to get this uh, into your own software, be it software defined radio or some other fanciful math thing. Um, just having MATLAB code to interface with this would be, would be awesome. And looking, looking at the design of this, that would be so neat for so many different purposes. Uh, it would be, would be great. So uh, maybe Tektronix, if you can make this available, if you can make make it public, how to interface with the RSA 306 through different software, this would be very interesting for all kinds of purposes. Okay, so I hope this uh, miniature teardown was fun for you and you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give the video a big thumbs up, you share it with the world, and if you have any questions or comments, and if you find out what this 09C IC is, please leave it down below in the comment section. See you next time.